This video was brought to you by Stoneberg, a bedroom planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Beal. Yo, what's up? It's now uh, Saturday morning for a change, and we are at Circle K Food Set. And behind me here, you see Volvo C40. So I did the XC40 uh, last winter. Wait, was it two winters ago? But it was uh, some winter. And now it's spring, and the C40 did 1,000 km challenge in 10 hours and 15, no, 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 sorry, 12 hours and 15 minutes. That was quite slow. I done some estimation based on uh, the recent test. Now this one should be able to do it in 11:20, and the Polestar 2 made it in 10 hours and 40 minutes. So it's slightly more efficient. It's still the same drivetrain as the XC40, but at least it's slightly more aerodynamic. And also the charging has been improved. So hopefully we can do it in 11:20 as I estimate. So this time. We are live streaming. We're covering the whole windscreen with uh, cameras. Yes, why not? At least we're not in Switzerland. <laughs> okay, and anyway, so this car has the wonderful Google Maps. So you see, at least for now, the car estimates that we will arrive at uh, speculate, speculate, speculate with 15%. Most likely we have to bail out that hobby because normally it will do it like this. I think it estimates this uh, based on that I follow the speed limit but you know I always add VAT when I drive because we pay VAT then of course we add VAT when we drive so right now we are taking uh, 12 uh, kilowatts hour per hour <laughs> at 98 percent and we will start exactly at 10 in 10 minutes so uh, we might start at 99 percent but I think it doesn't matter okay anyway yes now we'll do the final preparation and then off we go We are now at speculate, 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 charging at decent speed. Look at this, 152 kilowatts. So we arrived with 11% and uh, most likely the battery heated up because uh, prior to arriving here, oh, let me see, let me see. The car estimated we will arrive at 16% for the longest time and then suddenly it changed. So I suspect that it was spending a little bit of uh, energy heating up the battery. But okay, anyway, hold. no, 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 stop. What? Are you serious? Dude! Stop it! Maybe... Perspe no. Okay, how about now? What the... St stop it! Stop! Stop! I... I don't know what the heck is wrong with this shit, but... Come on, stop... Stop playing with me! Okay, okay. What the heck is wrong with the navigation? Okay, let me search for it instead. Ionity Varberg. Man, legacy automakers and shitty software. Okay. All right, all right. It, it, now, okay, we don't have enough yet, but uh, I better hurry and go to the restroom. Oh, it's so refreshing to come here in spring where I don't have to wear so much clothes and Oh, almost ready for ice cream. Here you guys see Ionity, Speculod. We have four stalls here. Prior to coming here, the live stream people, they, they told me that uh, they were actually occupied, all of them. But then fortunately, we charge, well, cars nowadays, they charge fairly fast. And then they will be gone, GUN. So uh, I can show you some of the Volvo stuff. We uh, have the front here kind of covered. There's a little bit of opening for cooling, I guess. And also this car can tow a uh, uh, trailer. So that's why we need a little bit of cooling, but at least they try to design the car to be uh, more efficient. And oh, look at here. We don't see this many cars nowadays. 
we have um, a headlight washer. Eh? And yes, I know this is made in Belgium. I've been joking. They said that it's uh, made in uh, Sweden, but of course it's Belgium. It's like a Belgian waffle. And then we have this nice coupe shape. And the back, and we have a spoiler. And it says recharge. Is it Vol okay? C40 recharge twin. Maybe they mean the twin engine. <laughs> no, but it's a rear wheel. Uh, no, it's, it's all-wheel drive. And then what's up with these flaps here? Does it serve a purpose? Is it for some aerodynamic properties? Because this car is supposed to have 2.8, a uh, uh, zero 2.8 uh, drive coefficient. Okay, but anyway, oh, okay, okay, I can show you now that we start throttling a little bit, but I better hurry because I think we only need around 40-ish percent. Oh, but look at that massive charging speed, huh? All right, we are on the move. That was quick. We charged for 14 minutes and uh, we topped up until 46 percent so you see right now the car is estimating that we will arrive with 13 percent well okay that's the uh, that's exactly right on par with my uh, estimation now one small problem with this car is that you only have the trip manual and you have the trip automatic which is just automatically uh, reset or some weird shit. but uh, i cannot get uh, another trip meter since last charge for example so that would be great but I don't have it so um, uh, I don't know now my uh, part consumption on other legs other than the one from Oslo yeah so that's a bummer but okay whatever let's not that ruin our uh, driving spirit now we're gonna hammer it towards uh, Göteborg We are now at Weilberg. Nice and warm here. I think it's around 14, 15 degrees Celsius. So now we are charging up here at uh, Ionity. I've been lucky today. We didn't have any Ladestau. So uh, what the heck is this? Oh, we are insects. You see, I now need to clean the windscreen. But okay, I'm going to show you. So, oh, what the heck is kind of dirty here. But uh, this screen is almost impossible to read. Can you guys see anything? No? Kind of-ish? No, I give up, I give up. We can go inside instead. So you see we're here. Well, you know, legacy automakers, like, like this one, why do you want a low range? Do you want to find a charging station? No. See, we're getting 150 kilowatt. Oh, nice. Okay, so now the next stop, for you guys who don't know, we're gonna do this. This is this is brilliant. We can say, well, can I just do this instead? Yeah, now it works. Wait, no, 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 no. Nine. Okay. All right, Helsing boy, we zoom in there, zoom in there, zoom in a little bit more. Wait, I don't see the charging stations, unless. I go really close, even closer, even closer. Then suddenly I only showed up. Da, 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 da. Wow. Like you really need to know exactly where you're going. Oh, there's only one. There's only one charger available there. Oh, shit. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I pointed down a little bit. Okay, okay. We're good, we're good. But look, look at this charging speed, huh? E-tron go home. E-tron, fat e-tron wouldn't be able to get 154 kilowatt now. It would be hovering around 100, 
3500 maybe 140 kilowatt because the voltage is lower and then e-tron doesn't take that many amps like this one so noise and no 1000 kilometer challenge is complete unless we do double sausage penetration mm. and the pervert <coughs> pervert combo of a garlic sauce with uh, ketchup <laughs> We've been charging for 26 minutes. We are good to go at 69%. Okay, I will leave at 70%. So uh, the plan now, yeah, yeah, okay. The car estimates 20% at arrival. Let's see once we get there. According to my calculations, we will arrive at 10%. We are now on the concrete surface and still on the 120 zone. And ooh, okay, we have Continental Viking Contact uh, 7 winter tires. They are quite uh, quiet. But um, how is the noise level? Okay, not EQS level, but I'd say acceptable. Well, okay, except for the, uh, we have we have tailwind right now, so of course very little uh, wind noise. But at least I'm on this stretch. I'm more listening to the rumble from the from below, and uh, it's good. I like it. Yeah. Now, how would would it be if we would have noisy summer tires on? <laughs> that would be a different story. We are now at the end point here in Helsingborg. This site here is becoming less and less uh, favorable. I, I like this site less and less right now, mainly because this Ionity charger, or actually, no, 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 not Ionity charger. My bad, my apologies. This tritium charger has been kaput for a long time. Seriously, I need to document this. Today, it's been broken for about a month. And today we have 26th of March. So we will see when it will be finished because this is a tritium charger. Okay, Ionity just happened to use the tritium charger, but who do we blame? A, B, C, always blame charger manufacturer. So it doesn't work. And then just have to do a little rant here. When I came here, there was a Polestar parking here, but the Polestar, has the charge port on the left side with the right side, not the right side with the wrong side. So the pole star for some reason was using this charger. And then first I backed in and then I figured out, oh, I can't stretch the cable. So then I had to then use the wrong charger and it looks so weird now. I have to pull this cable over here and then plug it in, no problem. It was just a bit clumsy for me. Now it might be troublesome next person who comes here and takes that one, but I will show you that one of the new char oh there's a tesla charging here but one of the new chargers here this one again tritium charger is also kaput why are the chargers broken all the time why are the tritium chargers broken all the time and then why are they not fixed within decent amount of time so again how long are these two chargers going to be broken because we have only six stalls here and two of them are broken so 33 percent of the chargers are kaput okay anyway i will stop bitching now get over to the gas station do my regular stuff maybe have a little uh, fika lad fika
are getting close to Vorberg and holy macaroni, the consumption is high. We're using uh, something called Range Assistant. It's uh, one of the newer apps. Uh, also available in Polestar. And just look, 300, uh, okay, we're going uphill slightly, but 390 watt hour per kilometer is the cu current. So speed is the biggest uh, consumption now. And then we have driving style, which is them, and then drive climate control a little bit. Wow. So we're down to 18% uh, percent right now. I think it was a good call to charge to uh, 75%. Percent. So right now the car estimate we will arrive, oh, oh, shit, at the charger with 14%. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, let's get over there. We are now at Varberg. Man, we came here with 12%. Percent. Initially the car estimated 21%. Percent. So you see, it seems like the navigate. oh, by the way, that guy, he's a follower with an i3. <laughs> and he's going, it's a Norwegian license plate. It's, an, it's a 94 amp hour or 33 kilowatt hour i3. He's going from Norway to France with a freaking i3. He said he's, he's trying to reach Strelleborg and then he will take the ferry over to, uh, I don't remember, Getzer? Well, it's in the Deutschland, yeah. Strelleborg is in uh, Sweden. But okay, anyway. I need to clean the windscreen, but it seems like the car's navigation does not take into account wind, or I'm not sure. Uh, but okay, it will be just a short stop. I will show you guys. This car charges like a boss every time. It has preheating before fast charging. So every time it will precondition the battery. And you see, consistently we get this kind of speed. A fat e-tron will be sucking around 360 amp. That's why this car charges faster than Fat Etron at low state of charge. And it should be also slightly more efficient than Fat Etron. Well, okay, the problem is that Fat Etron is going to have a nice flat curve all the way to around 75%, whereas uh, the, the Volvo will then start throttling at 30%. Then it, this one, yeah, so. But okay, I think it's time for some. Whoa. Whoa. I wouldn't slap that cable over there like that. A vibrating cable, water-cooled cable over there. Okay, whatever. Let's look at this one again. Yeah, I have to hurry. I think I need around 45% only. And then we are good to go. What? Well, we've been charging with 12 minutes and we should be good to go. I did the calculation, but you see here, the car still estimates 1% left. Uh, <laughs> I think we just have to re-calculate. Re, uh, it doesn't update. Okay, now it suddenly updates, 12%. Okay, we're good to go. 13 minute charging stop. We are now at uh, Speckerud and it's funny, the, the shade gives me, see, it's like I have some, uh, some beard there, some Elvis Presley. <laughs> Wait a minute. This time we arrive with 10% and we're not getting 150 kilowatt. Hmm. It could be that. Wait a minute. Wait, is there, some, is there something wrong with the charger? No. Some people might blame the charger, but oh, wait, 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 huh? This one says 152. Wait, now it drops. Wait a minute. I think the problem is that if you arrive with a little bit too low state of charge, then the car wants to conserve energy and then it doesn't preheat enough, maybe. That could be it. We're almost good to go. I actually have to eat a banana and get some drinks while driving because, look at this, let's go outside. It's we're good to go. I estimate that we need 55%. 19 minute charging stop. We're still receiving 114 kilowatt. This car charges like a boss. Okay, let me see. What about uh, the car's navigation? 15% arrival. Okay, that should be good. Let's go.
this is the last turning stop. We are now at uh, uh, Circle K uh, Strömstad and see we are, we still haven't passed the one hour uh, the, the 10 hour mark yet and we need to drive for about one more hour to reach 999. So this is way faster than expected. Maybe my estimation is based on the Norway route which you know you drive slower but then for the Swedish route it doesn't apply. This is great. Hopefully we can do this in less than 11 hours, which is a big, big improvement over previous run where the car was charging slower. It didn't preheat before the fast charger. It was winter, it was wet, but today way, way better results. So um, let me show you guys. <laughs> I put the live stream here, you see. So actually for you guys who are interested, I'm live streaming these. I try to live stream this uh, 1000 km challenge. You can check out the live stream channel in the description. I think I always have it there. So here you see, every time now we get 150 kilowatts. So I calculated I need 55% to be able to safely go back to Oslo. So uh, that means roughly 10, no, no, maybe 15 more minutes of charging. So in the past, I've been charging only 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> so that is amazing. This car charges like a boss. You know, it, in a way, it charges similar to a, a fat e-tron and it's more efficient than a fat e-tron. Okay, maybe not as spacious as a fat e-tron, but who cares? So, all right. Now, as usual, I'll go to Circle K. This is a nice feature, just like in the Polestar 2. You press here while you're charging, you go to parking, and then you have start heat and cooling. The car will stay heated or cool, depending on the season, for half an hour. Very nice. Now it's getting cold. It's four degrees Celsius outside, but no problem. Yeah, it start uh, heating up now. We are on the run again. The last charging stop here was 19 minutes long only. You see, now it's 1944, <laughs> but um, yeah, the car estimates 15% at arrival. I, I pointed out, or I navigated to Shell Mortens route, but we have some Unfall a little bit south of Xi. It's estimated to be eight minute delay right now. Ooh, I have no other choice but to go into it. And I guess we will have to deduct, yeah. This is the countdown. We have to go 985. So 981.1. Sorry, 984.3. 984.4. 984.5. 984.6. 984.8. <laughs> 984.9985985841 10 hours and 40 minutes wow oh i just wanted to go to uh, circle k i need to top up a little bit but we suddenly have turtle mode uh let me just uh clear it uh, look look uh, we are turtle mode with 9% battery left. What? But then, oh, the car feels a bit sluggish now. Mm. Oh, oh, it feels like a turbo diesel. Oh, we have, we have been reduced to uh, TDI power. Oh, shit. We are back at Furuset, charging up a little bit now. And you see, this time I did not navigate to the fast charger. And then the magic didn't happen. 
it didn't preheat or maybe even if I navigated here, maybe the car figured out, okay, you have too low state of charge, so we're going to conserve the energy and we will not preheat. So you see, you see the importance of software updates because now we are slightly cold gating. I think this is what happened during the, the previous run during winter. It was colder and we had yeah, the XC40 run. I think the car was slightly cold getting, but you guys saw during the trip, I mean, during the challenge, this is past the challenge now, that we had consistent 150 kilowatt every time. Yeah. Okay, anyway, let me do my little wrap up now. Well, I actually did say 10 hours and 40 minutes, but I remember that in other tests, I did those convenient charge deduction. You guys remember? Uh, I would charge a little bit extra just to get straight home here for convenience. Otherwise, I would have to stop somewhere before I got to Oslo. And I did arrive here with 8%. So we should actually deduct five minutes. So I don't know if you guys agree or not. This is just fine tuning it. And I also had that I lost a couple of minutes at um, at uh, Helsingborg where the guy was parked in a weird way. So I had to move around. But if I knew this car better, I would just perfectly park there and then plug it in. And a couple of times I also missed the, the charging stops and I arrived with, I kept going, I mean, I kept arriving with around 10 to 12%, no, actually more, more like 12 to 14% and every stop instead of 5%. But then in that case, I actually blame the car because the car did give me an estimation of how many percent I will arrive with, which is brilliant. However, it seems to not be able to adapt uh, according to my driving style so it will consistently estimate based on that I drive like a priest on the speed limit but then Tesla and BMW can adapt and give me a better estimation so that's why I don't do any deduction there but I will actually set this to 10 hours and 35 minutes which makes it five minutes faster than the Polestar 2 but the Polestar 2 was kind of cold uh ish uh it was yeah it was in november uh last year so uh but the polestar 2 also had the update where it preheats the battery and also charges a little bit faster than before so that's why the polestar 2 also did it quite well but this is a big big improvement over the what was again the 10 and then no, no, it was the 11 hours and what was the time again um it was really, no, 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 no it's 12.15. What the heck? This car is way faster than before. <laughs> Why is it so much faster than before? Well, because the XC40 back then had way higher consumption, but it also seems like there was a hidden consumption uh, for some reason, not sure what the heck was up with that, but also I think it cold gated. So that explains why now it's way faster. So. This is exactly what I wanted to prove today, but also I wonder why was my estimation so much different than the real world result? I have no idea. But okay, anyway, now we have proven that this is a fast car. It checks the right boxes. It does the right things, which is to, ooh, now we're actually getting 144 kilowatts. Yeah, you see this car can recover even if it cold gets a little bit, but it still bugs me that I need to charge and <laughs> I have low battery. Those are the few things they need to just tweak. But I get the impression that Volvo they, and Polestar, they actually care about updating the cars and make them better. So they are probably listening and they will probably fix this soon, hopefully. Whereas other car manufacturers, like when I tested the EQC many years ago, when I, and then we went back to testing EQC again, they didn't change anything they didn't fix or improve anything with the eqc <laughs> just in comparison but okay now you guys have seen it huh what do you guys think oh yeah i should say uh, something that um uh, the seats here are really good i was not butt hurt at all even after sitting here for 10 hours at least so the seats were great the comfort is good and the ride is also good i like it but i will talk more about this in the driving impression this is mainly for timing it and see how fast it is so it is really good and comfortable for long trips and you guys should also see that when i did those semi-long legs i went uh, 150 kilometers between weilberg and uh, and uh, helsingborg uh, it was still fairly fast to charge to 70 75 percent so which means that you don't always have to 
nail it down and charge you only 50% and rush it to the next one. No, you can all, you can even charge you 75, 80%. And then if you take a little bit easy, you can probably, probably drive 200 uh, kilometers between each charge. So I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.